I wanted to build a lightweight and compact first aid kit that would be of real use outdoor and potentially save a life. And in this video, I'll show you what I've selected for this kit and why. First aid kits generally look good value. You seem to get loads of stuff and just look how many pieces they contain, which incidentally seems to be the main marketing message, the number of pieces and the size of the kit. Although that doesn't, it would seem, relate to capability. Now, most kits that pop up on an Amazon search are actually very limited in what they can actually deal with. Small cuts and abrasions seem to be the overriding theme. So lots of band-aids or plasters for a start, and that's hundreds of pieces right there. A couple of small dressings and a bandage or two, lots of wipes, some gloves and a handful of safety pins. And that might be enough for some, but there are certain life-threatening situations you could find yourself in where having the right kit could literally save a life, maybe even yours. Especially if you're in a more remote location away from help or in a country where emergency services could take forever to get to you. And that would include the UK right now. My plan is to create a first aid kit in two halves. One half to deal with day-to-day -day minor issues, a compact and lightweight kit that can be used independently that I can throw in my bag for what you might call lower risk activities, such as going to the beach, day trips, and that kind of thing. This is actually something I already have although I've taken the opportunity here to update it. And another half for adventure, travel and outdoors, where the risks are greater and help is harder to find. Now I should say right from the start that I'm not medically trained. I have no experience in trauma care, apart from the odd deep cut or broken bone. I'm not offering any medical advice here. What I'm doing is letting you know what I've chosen to put in my first aid kit and why, in the hope that it will inspire you to think about the first aid gear you might carry, which might one day help you or someone else. Let's have a look at the trauma half of the kit first. And there's one clear intervention where you can really make a difference and potentially save a life. And that is when it comes to significant blood loss. If someone has continuous bleeding, then that is bad. If there's a huge volume of blood around the injured person, then that is very bad, especially when you factor in that clothing can absorb a lot of blood. And that unchecked arterial bleed could take just three to four minutes to prove fatal. So even a rapid response from emergency services could be too late. And obviously, if you're a long way from help, then stopping blood loss becomes even more critical. So what do we need? Well, if there's significant blood loss from a limb, say from a severe wound or amputation, then you need a tourniquet. And by the way, in the US, you would probably say tourniquet, and that's how it's spelt. But since the word originated in France, in the UK, we actually say tourniquet. And when it comes to tourniquets, there is a gold standard, and it's this one. This is the CAT or combat application tourniquet, and arguably is the world's most effective tourniquet and the one adopted by military pretty much worldwide. And this one is in orange for high visibility, but for tactical use, you would of course choose black. It works like this, just pull open the tourniquet, which is held together with Velcro. And if necessary, you can see this can be easily self-applied, and that's one of the benefits of this type. Apply the tourniquet two to three inches above the wound, avoiding knee and elbow joints, and pull it tight enough on the Velcro so that three fingers cannot fit underneath. Then you turn this rod here. This is called the windlass, and this provides a leverage force to increase restriction on the limb, and you turn that until the bleeding stops. Then you secure the rod in the plastic clip, Pull the Velcro across to make sure it doesn't slip out. Then there's a place here to make a note of the time so a medical professional can see how long it's been applied. So ideally, clothing would be cut away so that the tourniquet can be applied directly to the skin. But if the situation demands and there isn't enough time, it can be applied over clothing. It's also been tested to be effective with children, even young children. And also there's no immediate panic to remove the tourniquet. I picked up that it has to be on for six hours or more before permanent muscle or tissue damage can occur. Although under two hours is often recommended. 
So the benefits are it works and this type works really well. It's also lightweight at just 80 grams and it is quick and easy to use and as we've said can be self-applied. Now there are not many drawbacks other than it is quite bulky and it's also quite expensive. This comes in at around 30 pounds or dollars. And when it comes to price, I would always buy this sort of gear from a reputable supplier in your own country. So you can be sure you get a genuine product. I use Mia Supplies in the UK, which I trust and I'll link to them below, but I don't have any purchasing experience outside the UK. I also haven't provided any Amazon links for the critical gear because there's a lot of non-genuine products out there and it's hard to be sure what's real and what is knocked off. And if I'm going to carry this, I want to be sure it will work if I ever need to use it. I also wanted to explore another more compact tourniquet option and it is this. Now this is the Swap T tourniquet. This is how it comes when it's vacuum packed to minimize bulk and when it's out of the packaging it actually looks like this. And this is made from a non-latex elastomer and the printing on here is designed to ensure it's easy to use and that you apply the right amount of pressure to shut off the blood supply. Let's see how this one works. So the first thing you do is wrap it around the limb once again, two or three inches above the wound and it grips onto itself. Then pull and wrap using enough tension to turn the printed diamond shape into a square and these markings here into squares as well. Then keep wrapping it around the limb, keeping on the tension until you get close to the end, then pull up on the last layer and tuck the end into it. And that will hold it in place. Then you can write the time on it or use the provided wristband to mark the time. And as before, that will let people know how long it's been on for. The SWAT T does have some advantages over the cat. Because it's wide, it requires less pressure to occlude the blood flow and therefore can be less painful. And the makers claim it's a better option for children and that it can also be applied to large animals. And this is more compact than the cat and more affordable at less than half the price. And it also has other applications. For example, it can be used as a pressure dressing and I'll cover those shortly. And it can also be used as a sling and also as an elastic bandage to say, hold a splint in place. In terms of drawbacks, it's not as quick or as easy to use as the cat. And it's more difficult for self application, say on an arm. Although it can be done, put the end in your teeth, do the first couple of wraps and then continue from there. And it's actually 50% heavier than the cat at around 120 grams. And I'll come back shortly to which tourniquet I chose for my kit. Now, if the wound is at a junctional site, such as the groin, armpit or neck, where a tourniquet can't be applied, then the wound needs to be packed with gauze, applying pressure to the bleed location and directly to any damaged artery or vein, if it can be located. And then a pressure bandage needs to be applied to keep pressure on the wound. This is also the procedure with a limb wound that's not severe enough to require a tourniquet, but is still bleeding heavily. Again, pack the wound, and apply a pressure bandage. So what do we need to pack a wound? Well, ideally you need sterile gauze and this compressed gauze is ideal as you have here over three meters in a very compact form. Let me show you it out of the packaging. And as you can see, we have a huge amount here. This one is basic sterile cotton. However, there is a superior option which contains a hemostatic clotting agent to induce clotting and stop the bleeding more quickly. It is though incredibly expensive at around 40 pounds or dollars for the same size. And that's around 10 times the cost of this basic version. And there's no data to show improved survivability. So I went for this more affordable option for this kit. And this costs more like three to four dollars. And you simply push this into the wound and it's suggested you tie a knot in the end first or create a small ball on the end so you can apply more pressure to the point of bleeding, which might be a damaged vein or artery, for example, and then continue to pack the wound until it is full and then use the remainder to help with the application of pressure 
with the use of a pressure bandage to hold it tightly in place. So what do we use as a pressure bandage? Well, one option could be to use the Swap T tourniquet applied with less pressure than when it's been used as a tourniquet. And the other option is to use an Israeli or emergency bandage, which is the bandage of choice for the US Army and Special Forces. And when you remove the outer packaging, you have this, which is vacuum packed, keeping it very compact. And when it's out of the packaging, it looks like this. This is an elastic dressing with a non-adherent pad built in and a unique pressure applicator, which is this thing here. So let's see this one in action. So you put the side with the dressing over the wound with the pressure bar here directly over the wound and then put tension on the bandage and wrap it around once. You then slot it into the pressure bar here and pull it tight and the pressure bar lays flat putting pressure on the wound. Then you keep wrapping using moderate tension and if you apply too much tension you could unwittingly be applying a tourniquet so if possible check for a pulse below the wound after application. When you get to the end of the bandage you have this bar here with hooks built in to hold it in place and that's all there is to it. So this can be used to hold gauze in place when a wound has been packed or it can be simply used to apply pressure to a less serious wound that doesn't require packing but does need pressure to stem the blood flow. Now there's one more thing you can do with this if you place the bar under some of the layers and twist you have a makeshift tourniquet with the bar acting as a windlass. Now it's not a direct replacement for a purpose made tourniquet but it is a useful feature in an emergency. Incidentally, when it comes to chest or abdominal bleeds, packing the wound is not recommended as this may cause complications by putting pressure on internal organs. I've not included any chest seals or vented chest seals in this kit, which is what would be needed in the event of a wound, which penetrates the lung cavity, resulting in air being sucked into the cavity rather than used to expand the lungs. It seems though that the primary cause of this type of injury is a gunshot wound, and that is much less likely in the UK. So what else have I included in my trauma kit? Well, I've included these trauma shears. These are perfectly fine for emergency use, but they're not really good enough for regular use as they'll get blunt quite quickly. So a paramedic, for example, might gravitate instead to something like the Leatherman Raptor. These, however, cost just six pounds or dollars, whilst the Leathermans would set you back about 80. The primary use of these is to cut off clothing quickly and easily and the way they're designed means that they can be used quite safely too. Then here we have some steri strips uh, of different sizes and these are to close a gaping wound like a deep cut whilst you seek treatment and Rambo would simply sew his arm back together but for the rest of us these are a useful option. I also have some large dressings here that are more suited to abrasions and less serious wounds which don't require packing or the use of a tourniquet but will need more than a band-aid or a plaster and these can be held in place with medical tape. Then I've also included this burn dressing here. Not quite life-saving but it seems a worthwhile addition when you think of the potential hazards. Also, I've included some nitrile gloves to help reduce the spread of infection and it makes sense to wear these wherever possible, but in a critical situation, you might not have time. And then finally, I've included some antiseptic wipes to clean around a wound and some antimicrobial hand wipes for use before and after if time allows. And that's it for the trauma side of the kit. Let's see it all together. And you can see for this kit, I've elected to go with the cat for my tourniquet. In an effort to keep this as compact and as lightweight as possible, I decided not to put this in a Maxpedition light pouch with compartments and elasticated straps. If you need this kit, you're gonna to want to see everything so you can grab it quickly. So I chose this tough, clear, triple Ziploc bag, which I've actually shown and used before as a minimal in-flight toiletry bag. This is from Amazon. It's pretty cheap. They cost around 10 pounds or dollars for a pack of three. And I'll include a link in the description below. So let's look at the total weight of the trauma kit. And we can see here that it's just over 14 ounces, which is 400 grams. So I don't think that's bad 
at all. OK, so let's now look at the other half of the kit covering the lighter duty aspects of first aid. And this pouch came from a basic low cost first aid kit, which I actually did buy on Amazon, although I've changed a lot of the content. So let's have a look in here and see what we've got. So first of all, I've got here a survival blanket that retains body heat and is particularly important if someone is injured and in shock and it also helps to protect them from wind and rain. And then we have a few things in here, primarily meds consisting of allergy tablets here. I've got some Imodium, never without Imodium, just in case it can be worth its weight in gold. And then here we have some aspirin. Now, if I get chest pains that indicate a possible heart attack, then I have the option to take one of these 300 milligram tablets, which I'll chew and help speed up the effect. And that will reduce the blood clotting process, which could restore some blood flow to the heart whilst I get myself off to hospital. Now, if you're considering doing the same, please do your own research and factor in your own medical history, such as age, as this is not suitable for children and any allergies, etc. And it's important not to confuse a heart attack with a stroke, as aspirin can make things worse in the 15% of strokes, which are as a result of an internal hemorrhage rather than a blockage. I can obviously use the aspirin for basic pain relief, but not in conjunction with any bleeding, which could be made worse. Okay, let's see what else we have in here. So I've got some dressings. These are a bit smaller than in the trauma kit for smaller cuts and grazes. And I've got a conforming bandage this time to apply these and you'll notice we've got some safety pins here which will help attach that. Oh incidentally in here you'll notice these large white tablet looking things are actually compressible towels so you apply a bit of water to these and they expand and then you have a very useful moist cleaning cloth. Okay also in here we have some pretty cheap scissors. Bearing in mind that this kit might be used independent of the trauma kit, it's worth having something that you can use to cut away clothing if you need to do. And then in here I've just got a few things like some burn soothe gel, there's some alcohol prep wipes and then we've got one set of steri strips just in case you need to close a minor wound and then I've also got a whole range of band-aids in here. So that's that. And then I've got some tweezers, ideal for picking out splinters or perhaps picking out bits of grit from a wound. Oh, and also on the end here, we've got a tick remover. If you are out in the wild, that can be very useful too. And if we're cleaning out a wound, we've got some saline solution here. So if you've got a wound that's got dirty, you can just clean it with this. There's not much here, but there's enough to clean out a small wound or perhaps to wash out an eye that might have got some grit in it. And I've got this anti-bite just in case somebody gets a sting or a bite when out and about. And then finally in here, a new addition, would you believe, I've included the SWAT T Tawny K. Now, bearing in mind this kit, as I've mentioned, might be used independently of the trauma kit when traveling light. It's great to see we can still have access to a Tawny K just in case. And this can also be used as a sling or to apply pressure as well. And if used in conjunction with the trauma kit, it'll serve as a backup tourniquet too. So a very worthwhile addition. So let's get everything back in here and see how much it weighs. So let's have a look. Just under 11 ounces, which is just over 300 grams. So if you take both kits out you are looking at about 700 grams if you're traveling light and just take this one you're talking about 300 grams and i think that is a very manageable weight considering what this kit can do so there we have it on one side a basic but practical compact first aid kit which is light enough to take with you nearly everywhere and then on the other side for when the going gets tough 
We have this very capable trauma kit, which is also relatively lightweight and compact when considering what it offers and which might just save a life. And my plan is to store the trauma part of the kit in the car when I'm not using it. You never know when it might be needed. And there you have it. I'll link to some more kits here, which you might find interesting. But for now, I hope that's been useful. Thank you as always for watching, and I hope you can join me in the next one.